Hey, Benny, it's Bible time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Bible time, yeah. Bible time. Bible time, Bible time, Bible time. Woo, woo, woo. Pipe down. My bad. Did you get in your PJs? Mm, yep. Did you wash behind your ears? Mm, yep, yep. Did you brush your teeth? Mm, oh, yeah. Woo. Pipe down. My bad. Fantastic. Okay, our story comes from the book of Acts. Acts chapter 4 and 5. Jesus was doing a great work to save in Jerusalem. And all the believers had everything in common. They were generous with one another, Benny. Generous, I say. They sold lands and properties and gave it to the church. Which brings us to a man named Barnabas. Barnabas? Yes, Barnabas. What kind of name is that? It means son of encouragement. Now, pipe down. My bad. Barnabas was very generous in his giving. This is so encouraging. God has been so generous to me. It's the least I can do. I think we should rename you. You should be called Son of Encouragement. I love it. In fact, I'm going to go encourage some people right now. Who's ready to get encouraged? Yes! Miss Sandra, are you abiding in Christ? Yes, thank you for the encouragement. <laughs> wonderful, just wonderful. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Ryan Pierce, of course. Are you ready to lead our people in worshiping the God most high? Yes, let the people sing. Amen, keep it up. Wow, that Barnabas guy, he's so encouraging. <laughs> I'm just so overwhelmed. There's so much to cover in so little time. <laughs> Mr. Alex, don't be down. Be of good cheer. Cast your cares to the Lord because he cares for you. Whoa, that was encouraging. Wait, what is your name? My name is Barnabas. It means son of encouragement. Tell encouragement he raised the great son. Hey, wait now. Mm -hmm. Never mind. This is great. I'm encouraged. <laughs> wow. <gasps> Could it be the February calendar? And of course, Charter Chef. Scripture of the day in Ezekiel. Keep going. Yes! Yes! Let's go! Wow, what a nice story! Yes, Barnabas was known for his encouragement. However, there was another man in the book of Acts. A man named Ananias. Hi, I'm Ananias. Ananias also sold a piece of property. He brought it to Peter and the apostles, but lied to them by keeping some of the money for himself. Oh, Peter, I have sold my land for so much. Thanks, Ananias. The Lord revealed this to the apostles, and Peter said, How is it that Satan has caused you to lie to the Holy Spirit? Why did you decide to do this? You did not lie to men, but to God. Ah! No, 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 no! Ah, ah, ah! No, 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 no! I mean, he died? What? For lying? Oh, no, 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 no! That's no. right, Benny. He died. And not only him, but his wife as well. She also lied about the money. What? She died too? Oh, no! Oh, oh, lying is bad! We should never boast in our giving. For the Lord takes lying very seriously. Whoa, Ananias dies because he lies? We gotta unpack this. Do you have your Bible? If you have the Read and Grow Picture Bible, open it up to page 264. 264 for the Read and Grow Picture Bible. And if your Bible matches mine, go to page 913. This is Acts chapter 4 and the beginning of Acts chapter 5. And here we see two new characters in the book of Acts. This man named Joseph, or you can call him Barnabas, 
and this man named Ananias. And unfortunately, this is the last time that we're going to see Ananias in the Bible because he dies for lying. But let's start with Barnabas, okay? And really, this story picks up right where we left off last week after Peter and John are on trial and they get set free. Well, then they keep on speaking in the name of Jesus. And because they're out there sharing the gospel, people are getting saved and the believers, the people of God, those who have been set free from their sin, the church, well, they're now being built up and encouraged and they're growing in their love for each other. They're growing in their unity. Do you see this on picture number two and three, four? These guys are sharing everything that they have. It's like they're selling their properties, they're selling their stuff, and they're bringing it to the apostles. They're giving it to the church and they're saying, however you want to use my money, you can use it. There was this generosity amongst the people that was so helpful because if somebody didn't have a house or didn't have money, well, other people would share with them. And that's what you see in the church in the book of Acts. It's like if you had a house or two houses or a car or maybe two cars, like if your parents had that stuff and they went and sold it and then brought the money to the church, that's what this is like. It's like they're being so generous with their things and they're sharing so that way nobody has any needs. All their needs are being taken care of. And one of the guys that sells his land and brings it to the apostles is this man named Joseph, or you might know him as Barnabas. Look at picture number four here. This is Barnabas. This is where we meet Barnabas, and we're gonna keep on seeing him throughout the book of Acts. He's gonna keep on coming up, and it says here that he is from Cyprus, and he brought the, mo the money for the land to the apostles, and because he was so encouraging, because this guy was so uplifting, well, they called him Barnabas. And Barnabas means son of encouragement. Now, it doesn't mean that his dad's name was encouragement, like Mr. Alex thought. No, this just means that this guy was known for encouraging people. It's like if somebody was down, they were sad, Barnabas would come along and he would, he would remind them about God. He would remind them of who Jesus is and they would be built up. Or if somebody needed, like they were doing well and they were loving God, well, Barnabas would come alongside of them and say, hey, keep on loving Jesus, keep on living for God. And they would be encouraged. They'd be like strengthened to keep on living for God. And so Barnabas, when he spoke, he spoke words of life. He spoke words of truth. He spoke things that reminded people about God. And that's where you get encouragement from. When I'm reminded of who God is, well, that's when I'm going to be encouraged. And that's something that Barnabas did such a good job at. And when he came and he laid the money before them, wow, what an encouragement for the church. But we also see this man named Ananias, and he does not use his words in the same way. Ananias like Barnabas, he sells a piece of property. He brings it to the apostles, like he's giving it to the church. But the difference is, is that Ananias, he lies and he says that he sold the property for this much money and he gave this much money to the church, but really he sold it for much more. And so, so Ananias, he lies to Peter and the apostles, he lies to the church by telling them that he sold his property for, for less money than he really sold it for. So it's like he kept some of the money. He was hiding it. And not only did he lie to the apostles, but if you look at picture five, it says that also his wife lied to them as well. She knew about this and she didn't say anything. And if you keep reading on picture number eight, you see Ananias dies because he lies. Picture number nine, 10, 11, 12, you see this conversation with his wife and now she dies because she lies to the apostles. And so 
we want to make sure that we're not lying to anybody because look at what your Bible actually says in Acts chapter 5. Let's look at verse 4. Let's look at verse 3 and 4 and let's see what Peter says about this. He says to Ananias, Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? So Peter, he says to Ananias, why did you lie to the Holy Spirit? Why did you lie to the Holy Spirit? So he doesn't say, why did you lie to me? Or why did you lie to the people? Or why did you lie to the church? He says, why did you lie to the Holy Spirit? And then if you jump down to the end of verse 4, it says, you have not lied to men, but to God. And so here's a verse where we can see that the Holy Spirit, he is God. Because Peter says you lied to the Holy Spirit, and then he says you lied to God. And we need to think about that. Like anytime that I lie, anytime that you lie, really we're ultimately we're sinning against God. And if we think that we can get away with lying, if we think that we can get away with sin, like if we're trying to cover it up, if we don't want our parents to know about something that we did, so we lie, well, God always sees that. God always hears it. God sees everything. God hears everything. And so we, if we think that we can get away with lying, we have to remember that God always knows when we lie. And we don't want to lie. We need to speak words of truth like Barnabas, not lies like Ananias. And so if you're watching this video and you're with your mom and dad, you should keep talking about what we learned in the book of Acts. In fact, I just barely touched on it. You guys can read the whole story in the Read and Grow Picture Bible. You can read it right here in your Bible and you can keep on talking about what you learned here, the difference between Barnabas and Ananias. And if you have ever like felt the temptation to lie, like you want to speak false things, well, I bet your mom and dad would love for you to share that. And then you can talk about that and they can help you with that. And so keep on talking about the Bible. Don't let the conversation end after the video stops. Keep on talking about this at home with your kids and your parents. And we will see you guys next time.